Welcome to the poster presentation, Web Accessibility for ETDs, uh, with Terry Robinson and Laura Threat from Mississippi State University Libraries. Um, as always, um, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, just please post them in the chat. And I will turn it over um, to Terry and Laura. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me okay? I yes. Can yes, it's great, great, great. So um, I'm Lara Three, and today we're going to um, kind of go over the processes that we took to make our um, theses and dissertations um, web accessible over the past year and a half. Um, so we were first approached by a library admin in uh, June of 2019. Um, they basically came to us and said, hey, the university wants everything web accessible. And that includes um, your theses and dissertations because we drop them directly into our institutional repository. So anything that's created and put onto the MSG website um, has to be accessible. So um, let's see. So we had a bunch of questions when, when it came to that. Um, was it our responsibility to make sure that they were accessible? Was it the student's responsibility to make it um, accessible or was it even their major professor or their um, committee? So, and we also needed to know what all needs to be added. What makes a document acceptable um, or accessible? And then finally, um, we had very little direction when it came to this. This was kind of a um, top bottom mandate. So we didn't really know what we were doing and we were just told that it needed to happen. So we took that on and we began the research. So we met with Campus IT and the National Research and Training Center on Blindness and Low Vision to better understand um, what makes a website, what makes a document accessible and um, what would be acceptable um, when it came to accessibility. Um, one of the issues that we came um, into contact with was when you're making your document accessible, it's one thing to do it in Microsoft Word. It's a completely different beast to do it in um, Adobe PDF. And since our submissions had to go in the IR as a PDF, we needed them to be accessible in PDF as well. But MSU does not offer PDF to the students for free. It's not a free um, program that we offer. So what were we going to do about that? Um, so we started reviewing best practices with WCAG 2.0, which is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and also W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. Um, WC3 is actually an international community that, de that developed the standards that WCAG uses. I know that's a lot of acronyms, that's why we have it written down all nice and pretty for y'all. Um, and then finally, we benchmarked against peer and peer plus institutions. Um, who was doing this? What were they doing? Um, did they have any instructions already laid out to where we weren't completely reinventing the wheel? Um, so that's the left side, our problem and our research. And then in the middle, you can see our timeline of events. So you can see from the moment we were contacted all the way through the first time that um, we rolled out these guidelines. And we do want to note that even though we didn't put it in there, in between each of these meetings, we were going straight into research mode, um, benchmarking, and then we were also creating um, instructional materials as we went so we wouldn't have to create all of them all at the end. And that way we kind of knew where we started and where we were moving. Um, so now I'm going to let Ms. Terry take over and she's going to talk about the solutions and future research. So after all of our, uh, our research, we determined that there were going to be certain responsibilities that the students had to take care of and others that our office would do on the back end for them. Um, so we have all of our students add their alternative text to their figures and equations. Uh, we make sure that the hetero information for their for their tables um, and their continued table portions is uh, is added and we make them check the color contrast before they submit to our office. Um, and then our responsibilities are to, of course, impart the information to the students. So we, uh, we've added web accessibility processes to the workshops that we teach. Uh, we have a handout that we give all the students um, when they get ready to submit, uh, whether they attend a workshop or whether they um, have contacted us to let us know they're, they're ready to start submitting their document. Um, during their graduating semester, we give them this information 
And then um, once the student has completed all of their responsibilities, we then go in to the, to the final PDF and make sure that things like the tab order, the language, um, all of the metadata, uh, we make sure that the document has a, has a title and an author. Um, so we do the, the final PDF um, accessibility checks. We are very thankful that we've had very little pushback from students and faculty alike. Um, they all seem to understand that this is not just something our office decided to do on, on a whim, that we were actually directed by our campus administration to, to make, this, make this happen. Um, however, despite everything that we've been able to implement in a short amount of time, uh, we do still have a lot of needs. Um, lots of students, uh, use math type, um, especially uh, the math and chemistry students uh, when they're writing out their equations. Uh, they definitely prefer to use that, uh, that programming language in their documents and it's not accessible. Um, so we're having to come up with workarounds for that. Uh, we also are in talks with uh, faculty on campus who know much more about LaTeX than we do um, to see what we can do to update LaTeX templates that we offer to students so that they're also accessible. Because as of this moment, we don't have a way to do that. Um, we also have an issue with, uh, with tables and the fact that lots of students prefer their cells to be merged. Um, and uh, when you do an accessibility check, if you've ever done that, you'll notice that merged cells do not pass and they, they go against the standards. But because journals expect the cells to be merged, we're kind of at an impasse as to how we can go about in trying to get students to do that when the journals are wanting to submit to and their departments want them to have these nice pretty tables with merged cells. Um, and then some of the bigger uh, issues we've come across is that so different accessibility checkers uh, find different things. If you download an ex uh, a check checker from a website, it might find something different than the word accessibility check or the Adobe accessibility check. And so we're constantly trying to figure out what's going to be best. Also, different screen readers uh, pick up different things. Uh, certain ones will read math type and certain ones will not. Uh, so we're, we're still trying to find what's going to be best to make everything most accessible for everyone. Um, but we think um, in the short amount of time that we've had, we, we've put together a good faith effort for all of our students and our faculty so that we can make this uh, a possibility for our institution. Thank you so much, Terry and Laura. Um